Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noe. I am a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Hello. Good morning. Morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Yeah, that's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. We're hanging out in the Discord chat room. If you'd like to join us throughout the show with questions, banter, comments, GIFs, GIFs, memes, all that and more on the Adafruit Discord at adafruit.it slash Discord. And we're like hanging out in the live. GIFs. We, GIFs, we will GIFs. receive GIFs. <laughs> yeah, people receive GIFs. Yeah, so this is uh, we're at episode ep episode episode 438. It is uh, April 17th, 2024. And we're hanging out in the Discord chat room. Give a couple shout outs to the lovely folks watching us live. Good morning. Shout outs to Dewester, a cup of coffee. Yep. So hanging out in the YouTube chat, which I did not restore the chat. So <laughs> good morning. Yeah, but we can bring in comments. Out. Yeah, we can bring in comments from uh, Facebook, YouTube, I Twitch, I believe X, and maybe LinkedIn. So streaming on all the usual networks. All right, I'm going to get started. Adafruit.com slash free. Let's find out what are the freebies going on this week. Every week, we tend to have some freebies uh, that get automatically added to your cart when you spend a certain amount of dollars. First up, we're looking at with orders of $99 or more. You get a free PCB coaster with the golden Adafruit logo. It's a lovely um, PCB coaster. <laughs> if your order is $149 or more, you get the Adafruit KB2040. This is a lovely dev board featuring the RP2040 chip, SemiQT ports, and lots of GPIO. If your order is $199 or more, you're going to get the, eight, the Adafruit KB2040 dev board plus the PCB coaster and free UPS ground shipping for continental US only. And if your order is $299 or more, you get the free ground shipping, the KB2040, the PCB coaster, and a circuit playground express. Go to adafruit.com slash free to get all the details. Again, these automatically get added to your cart. And if you'd like to use our coupon code, our special coupon code for folks watching the show, you get 10% off your order if you use coupon code DVI out. And that's good for the next 24 hours. So there we go. Ba -ba all right. Cool. All right. I think we're all cut up. Kind of ran through that pretty quick. But uh, we have last week's uh, kind of prototype project is now released. Pedro has it here. Do you want, me, okay. do you want that screen or just yeah. this screen? Uh, I I'm not seeing any of my screens or am I? Okay. All right. Well, I full screened you. And you got there the HDMI display with some custom graphics displaying some Adafruit IO feeds. Yeah. So this is our DVI out project that is showing all the IO feeds. This hooks up to any uh, HDMI or DVI compatible display. On the back, we have the DVI. Uh, cowbell and a Pico W. So it's connecting to the internet. It's grabbing multiple feeds and not just the feeds, but the like the sensors that are attached to them. So we got the pool monitor, which is the DS18B. And then we have the uh, air quality sensor, which is up here. And that's also doing the humidity. And the pool monitor one is also monitoring its own battery since it is out there by the pool, uh, monitoring the water. It looks like we're at 75 degrees. Um, looks like it's going to be a 90 degree day today. So hopefully it warms up. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's nice. still cold for a pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, trying not to use the heater because um, the clouds have been covering all of the uh, solar panels. So not getting as much juice as we want to heat the pool. But this is so cool because um, you're able to mount this to one of our seven inch IPS displays that have the DVI and a bunch of other legacy connections like composite and VGA. This is the only monitor that has the USB power going out there. So you can also power the uh, Pico W as well. So everything's being powered by just this one cable. 
but it's connected to uh, one of our little portable batteries. Um, a lot of the TVs have a USB uh, plug, which you can plug this into. So everything is just going to be powered by that one um, uh, port on your actual TV, mm -hmm. uh, which is just one of these TVs here that you're seeing. They can plug right into that guy and into the input. You can switch it over to uh, this feed here. So this is a Arduino project that is bringing in some whippersnapper uh, sensors and feed. So you're able to mix all of that together. Code is all available. So you can update that to whatever sensors you have already running. You can just pipe that into this and change around your graphics if you uh, have different um, uh, sensors for it. Mm -hmm. Match that. But this is a very nice one that's ready to go. We thought it would be a really good one to display you know, these typical basic uh, measurements for outdoors. And yeah. What else can I talk about it? Both yeah, of yeah, um, You got some? Um, no, I think you covered it. Um, okay, shout out to Liz it. for putting together the, the code for us. Um, yes. we, we could barely do CircuitPython code, but <laughs> the Arduino code is uh, a good example of using the PK, uh, Pico DVI library for Arduino to do the custom graphics. Um, so she's got custom fonts, custom bitmaps. You know, and Arduino is a little interesting where if you're doing graphics, um, bitmaps, you can't just like add them like you do in CircuitPython. You have to convert them to a header file. So all that's been added in the learn guide so folks can reuse those or create their own. Um, and we have documentation on how to kind of create your own as well. Um, but it's a good example of how uh, custom you can make uh, your, your, your feeds. So they're all colorful, nice bitmaps, again, custom font. And then I like how the AQI, the air quality sensor has these three little, um, green, yellow, and red, um, squares. And they kind of indicate like <laughs> just a quick visual way to see, all right, my air quality is good today. And, or, or if you were in like a, a, a workspace where maybe you have a lot of, um, woodworking happening. You can quickly tell um, if the air has been filtered correctly or not, I mm -hmm. guess. And uh, in the code, you know, it has it so that if the AQI reading goes up a certain threshold, it'll make it yellow or make it red to kind yeah. of indicate that, hey, it's danger. But you also have the, the value there, too. So zero is like kind of saying it's, it's safe. Yeah. Very um, so we'll take a look at the learn guide. All the code is open source and published, mm -hmm. so you can you can uh, reuse it, uh, recompile it. Um, using Adafruit IO, uh, the, the Raspberry Pi Pico W um, was added. Uh, so we have hardware support. Shout out to Brent Burrell, who's on the, uh, Rubel, sorry, who's on the Adafruit IO team that added that for, particularly for this project, I think. So it's nice to have that uh, added in now um, for, for Adafruit IO. Cool. Um, Pedro, you'll take a look at uh, the learning guide. Did you want to take yep. any questions or anything? I think Slowing we have one. Right okay. Let's see. Really quick question from Rolls asking what's the best way to make a wireless outdoor temperature sensor that can handle Norwegian weathers. Oh. Uh, that is a one we do not have experience with, especially mm -hmm. the Nor Norwegian winters. If you can speak a little bit about that, maybe have like. Um, I know for the weather balloon ones, we have these, uh, the heaters, the plated heaters, right? Little heating pads that can help keep the, you know, the board from not freezing. So I don't know if that's something that can be used to sort of stabilize the temperature so it doesn't freeze on you. Hmm. But maybe yeah. you do need the absolute temperature for it. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer. Uh, I'm up here in the Northeast. And uh, our winters aren't that bad these days. <laughs> Maybe yeah, they were 20 years yeah. ago, but yeah. Yeah, all right. Did you want to drive this one? Yeah. So oh, this is jump it over layout. to the learn guide. Um, I thought it would be full screen, but let's do this one here. There we go. That way we're not covering the screen. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So this uh, pretty much just the layout of what we just talked about, how it is able to pull in multiple feeds and display it on any TV. Uh, we're showing it off here on a regular, you know, 42 inch monitor, and then the tiny little seven inch, which I think is a little bit better since it would be a dedicated little uh, monitor. 
The yeah. cool thing about it is, is you could build two of them and have one on a bigger TV and one on the smaller one. Uh, some of the parts for this, this is running the uh, Pico W uh, wirelessly connecting to uh, Adafruit I.O. And then we're using the Proto Doubler to house on the DVI output Pico. And that's what's doing the all the output to the DVI monitors. And then your basic uh, cables, uh, your mini HDMI to regular HDMI. Uh, and then, which I didn't list here since I didn't know how many people were actually going to build the smaller one, all of the... Uh, HDMI uh, cables that you can customize and build your own. So like these bright angled ones and these uh, uh, smaller ribbons so that everything is nice and compact instead of having to like coil up a bunch of wires like I have here. It's nice to have everything nice uh, fitted with the exact measurement or the exact lengths that you need to keep it nice and compact. So you can do your own DIY uh, cabling for that. I had listed it here. Moving on to the code, though, uh, Liz did a really good job of listing all of the Arduino libraries that you're going to need for setting up your Pico board. Um, definitely went through this to add all of the components, and then you can download the zip file that'll have all of the, um, the header files and the H files that you need to get this going. And then if you need to update any of your like how long it's sleeping, um, how long the uh, it, it's pulling in all of the data. You can update all of that in here. And then you can add more things. Uh, setting up your um, I.O. key, there's all the info on that, how to get your Adafruit I.O. feed info all in. Super simple for the 3D printing. It's pretty much just two plates that are housing the uh, doubler with the Pico and the DVI Pico. Uh, on top. Uh, very simple. No supports needed for this. Yeah. Uh, oh, one semi- thing I wanted to talk about, um, the, uh, the, the 3D printed uh, plate, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a VISA compatible mount, which uh, mm-hmm. I looked up, and VISA is like the standard for mounting holes that go normally on a wall-mounted display. Yeah. And there's two variants of it. There's 100 millimeters uh, on the, on the, across the the two groups of holes and then there's those 75 millimeters yeah. and this one is a 75 millimeter one um, but i assume that most tvs have both of them because it's kind of like a i have noticed that yeah yeah right so it's mm-hmm. cool that it's a standard mounting hole thing yeah so, so this could work on any this amount compatible device which is yeah. nice that's all <laughs> yep so uh, it could be compatible with that or you can update the plate to have that be the 75 mm-hmm. if you need it to be bigger Yep. Um, a couple of the parts that we need here. The uh, I got the Pico that already had the headers attached. That's the Pico H, uh, just to make it a little bit simpler for soldering all those headers on there. Um, we have, I did use the short headers for the DVI Pico, and those work as well. Now the doubler, um, we're using our nylon standoffs with the, um, I don't know how they list it here, just MF hex. So it has a standoff and then it has a thread on one side and that is what's threading into the printed mm-hmm. standoffs. And that's okay. just gonna allow you to mount the optional printed grill on top. Don't really need it, but it you know it's nice to have it covered in case you, know, uh, you wanna attach something like Stemma, uh, additional Stemma sensors on there. It is compatible yep. with that. So have that listed there, added that. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. The, the um, connections for the HDMI and power, I have that listed here. The DIY ribbon cables, that you, so you can build your own um, uh, ports and the sizes for the ribbon cables. Yeah. Yeah. And the monitor itself. Yeah. This is a good example of just kind of how you can show um the uh really the the adafruit proto doubler for pi cowbells so you can use that really low cost uh raspberry pi pico w um dev board it's six dollars um seven dollars if you want it with the the soldered headers um but yeah it's a great iot board it's great that we have uh support for adafruit io now um you can get up to two devices for free with a free account um with i think 10 feeds or more but check out the website to see uh how you want to use it 
What else? The Pico DVI uh, cowbell is great for displaying graphics. It's pretty amazing that it can do HDMI out. Um, and uh, we were looking at the CAD design here. We have models of uh, of all the dev boards. The uh, the Pico, I think, is just something that I whipped up, or I forget where I found that, but I didn't model that. Um, I'm sure you can find a better model of it. Uh, maybe on GrabCAD or maybe yeah. Raspberry Pi themselves have a model of it, but we have models of, we're able to generate really precise models of all of our PCBs, all of Ada Lamar's uh, PCBs. So they're all modeled in there for you, pre-populated with components. Um, so it's nice. Yeah, I don't have the headers on here, but it is floated up to the top of where the headers would be. Right. <laughs> like I'll do a lot of the, my yeah. modeling is just, I just figure out what the measurement is for it. Yeah. Just move it over. <laughs> yeah, I like that it's very open. Um, you can machine these out of, uh, or you laser cut these because there's not really much other than the standoffs. But you know, it's uh, this one, oh, I, I do have that. these yeah. little standoffs here, and that's okay. only so that it gives it clearance for. It's not on here, but the little debug port back here. Ah, uh, yeah. On there, that's to accommodate that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm noticing that some of them don't have the debug port on it. Mm -hmm. Some of the like the the one without the headers for some reason has the I guess some yeah. versions some revisions of the Pico mm -hmm. uh, W don't have those ports, but it's nice to have the clearance. Yeah, I mean, I'm, that's that's why I'm happy that I got one that did have it, so I could accommodate ah. the clearance for it. True. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yeah. Really nice IoT board. Yeah, Lots of GPIO and the the Pico or the the Pi Cow Bell doubler really gives you that all those extra features um, mm -hmm. to kind of add on different things, prototype new projects with it. Yeah. And uh, your design kind of makes it so that it's adaptable and you can add more stuff so it's modular. You know what? And, uh, Looking at this. Great ventilation. <laughs> yeah. Um, this thing right here could be deleted to have the battery sit right under, if you wanted to make it portable, have the battery oh, yeah. sit right underneath there. The sure. reason I had this was because it is a visual visual leftover from the Lego mount. Oh, really? okay. did that and you're actually pushing down that onto a plate. It would uh, sort of bend this. Yeah, that's right. It's such a long. Um, yeah, it's a good brace. Um, yeah, so it's a nice little brace. Bend. Bend it. Yeah. Cool. But if you don't need it, um, that could be deleted mm -hmm. and you could fit a battery under there. Cool. And of course, you can download all of the different file formats. Yep. If you're liking. Yep, and you have STLs somewhere too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Bye bye. bye. Here, let me, I can hide that for you. Okay. You got a nice alien GIF. <laughs> cool. Any other things you wanted to cover on the, the um, IO front? Or I think we're good. So. I think we talked about the, um, the battery booster, or not the battery, the USB boost the way I'm able to uh, power the 12 volt uh, TV is with this little guy here. And it's not going to focus because I have manual focus on. <laughs> yeah. So if you wanted to power that this way, you could get this uh, USB boost. It does 12 and 9 volt. And that is what's powering the TV and the uh, two boards on the back. Yeah. Should I'm last. looking for that cable. No USB 12 volt, is that what it? Yeah. Oh, I see it now. Yay. Here we go. This is um, what Pedro's is talking about. It's a USB to 5.5 millimeters or 2.1 millimeter DC booster cable, 9 volt or 12 volt output. This is nice. This is nice and handy to have. I didn't know these existed until you showed them to me. <laughs> I forgot I had. Two of them already. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, this would be handy. Yeah. The day finally came. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Very cool. Let me drop a link on uh, the chats and Discord. Here you go. I'm not sure if we linked it in the guide because it's not like super required. Yeah, it was mostly um, the way the Mar wanted it was for a bigger monitor, not having it as the portable one, but for shooting right. shots, you know, it was easier to have it on the smaller one and oh, yeah. to show that it'll work on a small monitor. We just yeah, any monitor. Stock. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
and any other questions and stuff folks can let us know but yeah, uh that's this week's project super cool yeah. way to monitor all of your io feeds on any tv so we go yay all cool right. go ahead and jump into this week's what are we prototyping yeah let me see if i can do 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 all right um so Last week, we showed you uh, a glimpse of our uh, prototype of a new prop maker feather RP2040 project. This is uh, the final version of it, um, somewhat. I still have some colors to change on the filament, but this is a prop that's inspired by the memory gun from the TV show Gravity Falls. It's a cartoon show. Um, this was a suggestion from uh, our kiddo. <laughs> My nephew, Gavin, was a big fan of the show, and he was like, hey, why don't you make this, this gun? Um, it's a fun prop. So it's got an OLED display in the back here, and it's got a rotary encoder here. And the idea is that you can use the rotary encoder to, sw uh, to switch between different uh, sound effect files. So this is uh, powered by the, uh, the prop maker, RP2040. That's an all-in-one uh, dev board designed for props like this. So it has a built-in amplifier. It has built-in STEMIQT. So this is an I squared C OLED that's connected uh, via STEMIQT cable. So it just kind of plugs and plays. The feather is inside this canister here. And uh, the speaker is mounted up here. Rotary encoder is right here. And then this light is uh, an LED noodle. So it's an LED filament. It's flexible. And it's mounted. It's press fitted into this uh, 3D printed um, holder. And it kind of retains the shape that way. Because otherwise, it's just flopping around. And this is a plastic uh, Christmas ornament. You can get uh, a whole pack of these on Amazon or, or other places. And it has a thread, so it just kind of screws in. Uh, there's a couple screws here that's assembled with some snap fit parts and some screwed parts, but nothing's really glued. Everything's press fit or um, snap fits and locks in place. I think it's a pretty cool example of showing how you can have an OLED uh, display actual files. The names of the files are, 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 are these actual uh, text here, and you can have custom fonts if you want on the OLED display. But it's cool to have a list of, of files, and you can swipe, uh, scroll between them with the rotary encoder. I want to highlight that these are not baked in, like the files. This is all loaded dynamically, like the text for the files that are in there. Exactly. So you can name the file whatever, and it'll show up. Uh, they're WAV files, but you could also do MP3s if you want to nice. convert them. Nice. Um, so I will share. A, there's 10 files that I created using a, a, a kind of a, a roll-free uh, sound pack. But they're kind of your typical sounds. Um, I really like the, the, the bulb. Like I have, I've always yeah, wanted to do like so an Edison cool. style prop and it's cool that it's like in, in this, uh, in this form factor. Um, you got a little push button here. It's just a standard push button, no led in there. And then the battery is these nice, uh, 2200 cylindrical batteries. It fits inside the handle here and, you know, it just gets screwed together. Um, it's kind of a fun, interesting shape. Uh, in the show, it, it's got this kind of bronze gold kind of, um, look to it. And then this is supposed to be like this kind of blast shield. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. So it's a fun, uh, we haven't done a, a, a kind of a handheld prop ray gun in quite some time. So it was really nice to kind of do it with the new hardware with CircuitPython. Um, you can you can add all sorts of different things to it. It's got an accelerometer, the, the prop maker board has an accelerometer. So if you want to do some accelerometer stuff, you could do that. It has a NeoPixel driver. So if you wanted to have this be a NeoPixel, and maybe have uh, each sound effect would have a different color. That could be something you could do if you wanted to put a NeoPixel in there instead of a, a noodle. So it's just a way to kind of inspire folks. Built-in battery charging. It's got USB-C, so you just plug in, starts charging the battery. Um, no animations said, really in it because it's just an LED. We don't yeah. really have a way to animate the LED. If we wanted to do PWM, we'd have to solder it to one of the pins. We were like, yeah, just, just make it so it turns on and off. But it's completely customizable if, if folks want to do that. And uh, it's cool to have a rotary encoder. I really like a rotary That's encoder so cool. and a screen on a prop. I haven't really seen that done in, uh, in some of our stuff. So, And the on-off switch is down there, too, so I can turn it off like this. Boop, now it's off. Super cool. Turn it back on. And uh, it's all kind of press fit stuff. I can take this out. Let's see if uh, I think it's probably pretty tight for me. Let me see here. Yeah, I was going to remove the screen, but I don't want to mess with it right now. <laughs> Not live. 
Yeah, um, I have this piece kind of snap fits off. So if you really want to get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good way to do that. Yeah. yeah, we got screw block terminals. Just a reminder for folks, the screw block terminals makes so you don't have to solder really anything to the feather. It's all modular. Other than the slide switch, we do got to solder that to the enable and ground pin. But it's nice that everything kind of just threads through here and then you can just connect it to here. And I really like the color coded cables here. It lets me know what's the switch, what's the LED. Oh, really um, I got that white marker. Oh yeah? The oil-based white marker. And that's how I was labeling what is ground, what is power. Oh really? Yeah, so that's a, good idea. a lot of the ribbon cables, we'll get like the 10, like the 10 pack of them, but we'll use, you know, them in like, you know, I need four here and like, like string keys, peel it off. Yep. I'm left with, you know, ones that aren't labeled. So that's a really good way to um, add labeling to them to a black wire is to use the oil-based white Sharpie to uh, be able to draw on the black silicone wire. So it'll stay uh, on there. Yeah, and we'll just yeah. Slip off. yeah so that's uh, my tip for that one. And I just sit there and like dot it across the entire um, uh, okay. one side of the uh, wire. Yeah. But yeah, the, the way that we we're able to nicely bundle everything with the prop maker because of the terminals, man, it is just chef's kiss right there being able to um, neatly, modularly um, assemble this. <laughs> because yeah, of, as we're seeing right now, we'll, we'll have to update certain parts, we'll have to change colors on things, adjust tolerances, and it's easy to go in there and just unplug something that needs to, you know, thread through something to easily replace a part. Um, Cause I already, I already know, you know, this is for the kids. So they're going to break something on it. Yeah. When they do, it's easy to pop off, replace the part and, you know, plug it back in to uh, rethread things. Yeah. yeah this is for really sure. Yeah. I really like that this piece is not 3d printed, you know, it's, it's flexible. Works. It's not going to break. It's yeah. bendy as I'm flexing it. So it's all plastic and, uh, it's clear. It's meant for like DIY hobby crafts for like holidays. So yeah. I really like that uh, I was able to find something on like Amazon that you can get and it has a thread. So it's easy to uh, take it off, put it on. I feel like um, we could reuse this for a different project too. Yeah, I think we might do like a lamp or something. A Christmas kind of thing with the noodles. Yeah. I really like the... Um, uh, I'll, I'll speak a little bit about um, when you're writing CircuitPython code. There's a way when you're and you're dealing with audio files. There's a way to do um, multiple audio files playing at the same time. So, for like example, oh, yeah. the lightsaber it has the uh, the mixer object in CircuitPython, and this one doesn't use the mixer because we found that there are some latency issues. So that's why it's so quick. It's just it's just mm -hmm. not using that mixer. The mixer has this little bit of a delay. So just if, if folks want to uh, make something really low latency, maybe don't use the mixer if it's not needed. And uh, that's just one kind of thing I, I thought that was like interesting. Did you uh, have you tried holding down while you're doing the? Yeah, I wasn't sure if we wanted to keep that. I think it sounds cool. It's kind of like glitchy, I think it right? Cool, yeah. It's not intentional, but uh, it's just it the way cool. it is. Yeah. Um, um, you gave me your only acrylic. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I had uh, I had to. Cool. I have to cut some. Like I, I had to. Uh, cut some more, but that was the last pre-cut. Because I have a small CNC machine, and not every piece of acrylic is going to fit on there. But uh, here it is, 3D printed in like a translucent kind of color. Not the one I did in the print. But uh, Pedro's got the the I did nice the acrylic Petri one as well. Um, oh, you did a Petri? Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. But man, the, this is the edge lit one, and man, I keep looks every great. time I look over at it. Yeah, I I keep feeling that a light yeah. is on. <laughs> So yeah, I, don't know that I remember to turn it off, but it's just the edge. Being I lit. did model this if folks want to print that, but I just don't think you can get the same effect. Maybe in resin, but like even still, like oh. it's great that you can just buy something off the shelf, and it and it screws in, and there's no, you know, needing to wait for this part to print. The only print, the only printed pit is that the internal thing to hold the the noodle in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool, and I you saw... can choose different colors of the noodle. Um, but it was it was a perfect size, like the 300 millimeter length, like fit perfectly in here. So it all just kind of worked out nice. A little bit extra left over. Yeah, like that's true. But it, it kind of makes it so that it goes all the way down in there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it hides it. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, really. I don't know. I kind of like it in the gray color, like all gray. But to be so accurate, it's you know, it's got that brown kind of mm -hmm. color. 
Um, there is another piece here that I didn't print out. It's like supposed to have like these like little symbols or something oh, on I it. I didn't put it on yet because I didn't put it on either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta print it. Otherwise, it's a fun prop. We haven't done a prop this is so cool. Yeah. This is really cool. I guess what was the last one? I think the the Howl nine thousand. It really wasn't like a handheld prop, but uh, yeah, prop maker still super awesome board. Mm -hmm. Um, so give us uh, maybe two weeks because we're taking next week off for spring break. Mm -hmm. um, but then we'll be back with this one. Um, I've already started um, taking assembly photos of it, but it's a it's a relatively uh, simple build. I think uh, I'll put it on for beginners because you do got to do a little bit of soldering. Like I said, the slide switch for the feather. Um, you do need a resistor for the LED. Um, and this only says, seems simple to us because we've made so many of these, but I would yeah. do it. A I think bit it's more. fine. It's way better than uh, um, <laughs> the original ray gun from uh, Fallout. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, my God. It, there's no comparing. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I would say this is for beginners. <laughs> okay, I'll write maybe it. Maybe intermediate. Maybe yeah. intermediate. Yeah. Again, we're looking at this through the lens of you know, us making these things for 11 years or whatever yeah i have a really cool stand too so it oh yeah yeah balances. that was a quick one i, I might kind of make it more fun or something more intricate but yeah it, it keeps it upright like mm -hmm. this which is nice the hero shots Ooh, yeah nice. here's my <laughs> i have an extra uh bulb this is the christmas bulb it comes with like the thing i got a pack of 12 so i, I shipped pedro six of them so that maybe we can do something else with it but yeah it just has like a, a really Really uh, simple thread. It's like one and a half resolutions. It took a little bit to model that to make a, a nice adapter for it, but sure, yeah, um, I did test pieces, and it's always good to do test pieces. <laughs> oh my gosh! Where yeah. you print the whole elaborate kind of oh, thing. I don't know. But yeah, just a simple little plastic bulby bulb. Super cool. Yeah, it's a fun one. I, I like these fun, non uh, non involved kind of thing. It's more like about the design and stuff. It's cool. <laughs> Yeah. No, I like that. Uh, this was such a good way to get the kids to clean up. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You're like, you can't play with the prop unless you clean up your room. And they're like, oh my god, you clean up the room. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And again, it was a it was a suggestion from Gavin himself. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a fan of the show. He's got those journals that are like these, you know, um, cool references within the universe of Grab show. Balls. It's a really good show. Great, great writing. Um, very funny. And uh, that was just one of like the kind of interesting props in the show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a unique design. I really like that the uh, the design is so different than any other kind of ray gun that I've seen. Yeah. And especially since it has like a, a cool light, and the noodle I've been wanting to do a prop with the noodle, mm -hmm. so everything's kind of melded really good yeah. together. So I saw that cool. intricate um, filament one inside the uh, fusion files. That does will that print work? The one where the filament for the yeah. Bottom? Yeah, that was cool, right? Oh. Yeah. I had to do a lot of 3D moving the spline curve to make it loop around, but I couldn't figure out a way how to print that. So I just ended up going with a simple, you know, what you see here. It's just that simple thing. Uh, otherwise, I'd need like a lot of support because this prints flat with no supports. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you could print it, but I don't so know how you would get the noodle in there. Oh. Another thing would be to try to take the noodle and like fend, maybe take the tip off and mold it. You know what I mean? Like fold it into itself, so it makes a loop. Oh. And maybe use like a a clear fishing string to kind of tie it down somehow. Hmm. I thought about that, but there are so many details in the model, more more like inside the model uh -huh. that like I focused on like how to make this so that it's uh, no glue really. I mean, there's some decals that you can glue down, but uh, I wanted everything to be kind of screwed and snap fit. But uh, yeah, the files will be all available. So if folks want to make it even more intricate, they're free to do so. Yeah. So super fun. Mm -hmm. We'll have it out in the next two weeks. Yes. Uh, but I'm starting on the guide now so that uh, I'm not like behind when I take next week off. All right, Pedro posted a link to Adafruit Cat Parts if you want a 3D model of the Pico uh, Doubler or the the Feather Prop Maker RP2040 boards and many other boards. They're available in different file formats 
on GitHub. Link is in the descriptions. And if you want to pick up your own prop maker, you can get 10% off with DVI out as a coupon code. I think they're in stock. I can check real quick. I'll be doing prop maker RP2040. They are in stock, 20 Ooh. bucks. I mean, there's so much stuff that's in it. I forgot. We got servo control, servo, you control yeah. servo, you control NeoPixel, it's got accelerometer, high quality digital amplifier, the I2S. My favorite prop board, the prop board, onboard charging, CircuitPython, Arduino is dope. Cool. Yeah. Uh, future stuff. I want to make a new Pit Boy. <laughs> like I, I've watched all the Fallout. Uh, I've I really enjoyed the Fallout TV show that came out That's last week. What I'll be doing while while you guys take off. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, catch up. On up. It. I, I think. I know. I'm so sad that I've not. Yeah, you've been really under the gun with this one. I know. But, uh, I think Pit Boy would be really fun. I want to do one. We haven't done one since Raspberry Pi B. Oh my God. We're on Pi Five. It barely worked. I don't think we need Absolutely. a Pi anymore. We can we can use. Um, um, yeah, John made a mini pit boy. Yeah, he did a, a little one. It's kind of like an image yeah. slideshow and it had wow, a, okay. yeah, okay. but, uh, I, I'd like to do them with maybe the 3.5 inch feather mm -hmm. TFT all on circuit Python. We can have audio. Maybe we can put a radio, a real radio in it. So yeah. there's a pit boy, uh, re remake. That's a remaster, I guess from IGN. It's like $200. It's like mm, super, yes, yes. it's like a clock and, uh, it has a radio, oh. I think. Oh, I didn't so it's fully featured. Part. It's going to be a lot to kind of compare to it. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it's a little like, do we want to invest the time? Don't know yet, but it's, have, it'd be cool to do one. Yeah, we have an FM radio. Yeah, we do. We do. We could yeah. actually make it FM radio. Huh. So it could be pretty cool. dope. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, Gavin listens to a lot of radio. It's actually how he goes to sleep. He has a radio on in his room. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we have a lot of community makes. Um, we'll do the time lapse and then community makes. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Let's go All ahead right. and jump into this week's time lapse Tuesday for community makes. This week is this super cool, flexible um, snail. That's a big boy. What's that? Big boy. Yeah. I don't know why you made a snail. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is it for? Spring, springtime is that? I don't know. Drop? It's a cool, it's a cool model. Let's take a look at the time lapse. Yeah. Um, it looks like you use some rainbow PLA filament with a little bit of glitter inside of it. Yeah, it's the glitter chameleon mirror rainbow. So it uh, goes through the purple up into a blue, and you can see there all the print settings for that. Yeah. Um, in place, I did use some supports just for the sides. Oh, of okay. His, uh, the shell, and. Does it look like they've added a butt to his shell right there? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a crack there going on. Uh, it's a fantastic organic model. Yeah, I'm amazed like that the pocket. printer didn't have all this string. Minor it's cleanup. Good. Maybe a little bit of zits here and there. but I didn't do any cleanup, yeah. It's a pretty um, good uh, quality there. There is a bunch of like angel hair here and there. You can see yeah. on the eyeball. But for the most part, yeah, this is a the this chrome, I'm sorry, chameleon chrome mirror rainbow. <laughs> This is wow. really good in handling um, any drips or any like stringing. And as I've said many times with the way that I do the time lapses, it takes, I think it's like five seconds for the, that it's waiting, that the nozzle moves away from the print, waits for like five seconds as it's sitting there, you know, getting hot and dripping as the camera is taking a long exposure picture. Yeah. Uh, this one is able to not have as much drip in terms of the, the filament just oozing out while it's waiting for the camera to snap a photo. Okay. I really like this filament for that. This is Stronghold Chameleon Chrome Mirror Rainbow. Stronghold. Okay. You got it on Amazon, I think? It is on Amazon. Delivers like next day. And okay. Really good stuff. I wish I could use it all the time. Huh. I've seen some prints come out so stringy. Okay. Yep, nice it can be. Bottom, all nicely uh, print in place. You can kind of see the joints here. It's a, like a hoop yeah. that's uh, hooking into each other. Can I see it? Whoops. Yeah, one of these. Yeah, it's hard to see. But yeah, flat. I did have a, have a brim on there. 
Oh, okay. Uh, this is like smaller, thinner pieces like this right here. When it first starts printing, I'm always scared it's going to get knocked off. Mm. But I didn't really need it. And yeah, the eyes are delicate. Um, the kid's already broke. I printed a blue one from that for them. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I already blew it. But it glued on really good. Okay. So this is designed by Tame Them on Colts 3D. It's a paid model. It's about $3.66 USD. So mm -hmm. it was dollars. Mm -hmm. um, there's some a lot of photos of it. Um, sorry, the website's a little. That's a good one. Right there. Green there. Yeah, I wonder if that's a the three D render. Not sure. I was gonna say maybe they put on the three X. Uh, oh wow, I didn't notice the texture. Sorry, there's a little there's texture. So on this. much texture. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is it is detailed. Of the snail, toy, turtle, print in place, animal, flexi, cute. <laughs> Tame them. Get all the SEO titles in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a cool print. Cool model. Definitely worth the three bucks. Yeah. Just reading if there's anything I can pull out of the thing. So, you know, FDM. Oh, I wanted to show off my teeth that were FDM printed. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> we're going into Shop Talk now. No, no. I don't, I don't remember where I left them. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, Pedro went to the dentist, and these days dentists will uh, produce and 3D print a model of your of your teeth. Uh, last time I went to the dentist, they did not have a 3D printer, and I did not get a 3D. I got, I think, photos, x-ray photos of my teeth. But nowadays, you can get a 3D model of your teeth, which is super cool. Yeah. They didn't give like you an STL, did they? Them. It looks like you just request them because they just throw them away anyway. Oh, they throw them away. They should really give them to the customer. Right. I would like an STL of my teeth. Then I could integrate them into a uh, some creepy uh, Halloween prop where it has my actual teeth. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. And um, I don't know. That's cool. Let me know in the comments if you have had your dentures 3D modeled and printed because I never heard of that. I knew they did it, but I thought it was like for very crazy operations and stuff. I thought it would be a... Um... Uh, form labs like a resin print you know right it, it looks fdm to me like 0. Yeah. 0.005 resolution that's crazy any support material well i don't know <laughs> maybe pva yeah what printer did you guys use you know i don't know right I should ask them yeah i gotta go back like all year at, like yeah. four four you all, your, your, all refillings yeah yeah psa fillings back in the day they used the wrong fillings the one with maybe, the mercury yeah. in it that crack your teeth Mm. Yeah. All right. Again, the uh, models on Colts 3D. If you want to support the tame them, the designer of the model, it's good stuff. Um. Yeah. Like it. Very cool. We're gonna move on to community makes. We got a handful of them, so we can take our time on them. We got a couple, about 15 minutes left of the show. All right. First up, I got a remix of our our legacy lightsaber with the original prop maker feather wing. This was posted up by flower, Butt on Thingiverse, and uh, they wanted to remix uh, the part with uh, a couple of different embellishes embellishments. Oh, nice. And I think they redid the threads so that they're um, going a different way. I can see here. Um, oh. You can, you can still use the original top and bottom with the new parts, airtight circuit cover with additional braces for security here. And a solid threaded connector here. So that's nice. No supports required for the parts. And they have a little summary here. Just wanted to share the alterations made to the hilt. The centerpiece can now be screwed into the counterparts. This design provides more rigidity along with quicker assembly and disassembly. Okay. So it's the work printing without supports. It saves you some time of filament. Printed the entire lightsaber vertically without supports, and everything works great. Nice. Original design by Adafruit. This was printed on a uh, in PLA with any cubic printer so really like it when folks uh remix the design and offer their their designs this is a i think the emblem for the jedi order very mm. cool <clears throat> very nice okay uh, suspect as may the 4th gets closer we're gonna see a lot more of these being printed out yeah. cool after that we got a cool post of your uh, tron disc oh i missed uh, that. does oh, this one use oh this one's a bluetooth one that's right yeah, so uh, Brian M posted their make of it. Works great. Now I need to find time to wire up the electronics. So uh, this one has a, uh, a print 
uh, a filament swap. So you print uh, the, the mm -hmm. kind of the bottom is the, actually the top. It gets printed in a white or a, a translucent filament. You swap it out for black, and you grit this infused um, disc. And uh, all the electronics uh, get fitted in there. It's, I think, a prop maker. Or is it not a prop maker? No, it is. OK, it's prop maker Featherwing with a blue fruit and RF52840. And a uh, little speaker. And uh, I think it has it uses accelerometer to shake and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you actually took this to the uh, Magic Kingdom Tron ride. Yeah, right when it opened. It's so cool. Yeah, it was I really, was really like, cool. I was, the, t the timing on this was freaking insane. Opening of a ride. It took mm -hmm. like what five years to make yeah it took like maybe five or six years because of the pandemic getting the virtual queue to just get on the ride is so hard, really hard. <laughs> like yeah. you gotta wake up at seven no six in the morning and like get your spot in there with you know millions of other people trying to get in <laughs> yep like but yeah people are making it uh it's got about six makes in here and brian mm -hmm. m is gonna try to build it with the electronics it's very fun can I brag it's better than the one that they sell at Disney because you don't need to pay to change the color. There's a yeah. magnet, so it, it can actually stick to your back like in the movies. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, I hear there's a new movie in the works, a Neutron movie, Aries. Yes. So I we'll guess see. it's going to be a triangle now? Is oh, really? Like in the teaser? Yeah. I'm not sure. Like no, this is a cool shot of like it in the background, the ride. <laughs> it's dope. I am. I have... I've only wrote it twice. <laughs> yeah. That's how hard it is. And I live here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Eight minutes away. Yeah. As an annual so pass holder. And it's so difficult to get on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, moving on. Jessica posted up her make of the, uh, the heat set insert press. And she wrote, I've been looking forward to making this for ages. And I finally got the hardware and made it. It holds my soldering iron, and I appreciate that it's easy uh, to adjust the stopper. Uh, she says, I had my husband make this glorious walnut base with a little tray to hold uh, the inserts, screws, and all the little bits that roll around on the table. So uh, Whoa. looks like it fits really nice. I love that base. It's fantastic. It's got a nice that. pocket there. Yeah, it looks super, like super clean. Bevels and chamfers all over. Yeah, really it's nice. Really nice job. Tray. Wow. Yeah. So this one... Uh, Looks like it uses the black anodized aluminum, which is great. Oh my god! A lot of remixes that. done to Whoa. this one because uh, folks uh, tend to find, you know, some of the tonches might not work out, but definitely take a look at mm -hmm. all the other remixes. Um, lots of folks uh, remix the handle, the the holder, the clamp for the uh, the soldering iron itself because uh, th those are just it's just impossible to make something that fits every soldering iron. <laughs> I would like to highlight that the tolerance is not fitting. Um, yeah. yeah, you printed the handle again. Same printer, different filament. Now it's different tolerance. Yeah, it's weird. The it filament. Yeah, the filament. <laughs> what? I don't know why, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, very cool. Thanks to uh, Jessica for posting that up. It looks fantastic. All right, moving on. We got another make. This one's from Ols Brian M. Also made uh, the Epcot Spaceship Earth. Love this project. So cool. It's a uh, a nice scale replica of the uh, Spaceship Earth from Epcot in um, in uh, Disney World, and they, they printed it on their Prusa in this uh, this gray filament. Nice. And uh, Osa says uh, now time to get the, the electronics complete. A lot mm -hmm. of folks have uh, made remixes too and added all sorts of different. Microcontrollers, anything that uses WLED, it's really fun. Uh, I really enjoyed this project. It's really fun. So it's great to see people still making it. Great addition to your collection if you're a uh, Epcot fan. <laughs> After that, right again, better than the one that they sell at the Creation Shop. Oh, really? Yeah, because they do sell one, but it, it just doesn't have the many lights. Um, yeah, you know? it doesn't have WLED, man. Yeah, WLED is fantastic for this project. Like the animations are so cool and you can like map it different ways if you want, but yeah, love this project. All right, moving on. We got a make of our Pi SSD media server. This is a cool 3d printed enclosure that we designed for the Raspberry Pi and an OLED display button, uh, some additional buttons, 
This was posted up by, let me see, the maker is uh, L. Muriel, L.M. Iril. They posted this up on Colts 3D, so that's cool. It looks like a robot's face. Yeah, it does. This was, uh, I think, for accessing the, um, oh, the SSD card or something, the micro SD card. Yeah, it's got a handle. <laughs> uh, let's see, not a NAS remixed. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It's you left yours here. here. I did, yeah. Yeah, it's cool if you're doing a, a media server and you want to use something like Plex or something else. What's on here right now? Uh, I think Plex. Um, Plex lets you stream stuff. Uh, I really don't have any, what do you call it? Um, movies on, on my server, so. Whoa, my but connection it's... just died on me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. Was I still there? Well, I was just saying that I don't have any uh, files, I think, on my actual SSG. Mm. Or maybe I did. I think I grabbed all of our Adafruit videos and just oh, threw them okay. on there. And that's all it does is it just plays them. But the point is that you can um, you can boot off of the SSD drive. So you have mm. way more storage. And it has a cooling fan and all this stuff. You'll see this design a lot. A lot of uh, makers have kind of designed similar things. And I wanted to have my own spin on it with our own you know, STEM uh OLED display. And it looks like they posted their own kind of code here for showing the CPU oh, load. Wow. It's got these bar, bar graphs and you got the uptime and low oh, temperature. Cool gauge so it's pretty cool it's good use of the Raspberry pi right. it should fit the pi 5 i think mm -hmm. and it's super modular because you can change uh, out the faceplate if you need to yeah i think it uses heat set inserts so it's built to be modular all right moving on we got some more props random rdp posted up their make of the um zelda breath of the wild guardian sword um, this one's posted up with no with no uh, comments or description, so just got an image of it. it looks really cool. It's kind of an older prop. This is uh, before uh, the so prop before makers. Times. Yeah, so you got uh, a little bit more intricate circuit here with a five volt train kit and the lipo battery backpack, mm -hmm. but it's still cool. A lot of people make this project. It's a very fun one. After that, we got a dark saber. This one uses the prop maker feather wing. The Bluetooth uh, feather. This was posted up by Random again. Random RDP. They posted their dark saber up. So it's kind of a fun build. I like that the blade is fully three D printed. The covers are fully three D printed. Everything's printed. And you have the ability to change the lights and the animations with the, excuse me, with the Bluetooth board. Yeah, I like the feel of it. I think they yeah. updated the toy one. At, uh, oh, yeah. At, uh, Galaxy's <laughs> Edge. It still feels chunky. This one feels nice and like. Yeah, it's pretty slim. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Prop Maker Featherwing. After that, we got another heat set insert. This is a remix. It's got a different nut plate. Um, it uses these eccentric nuts. So this was posted up by uh, Najo. They said, this is a modification of the Adafruit heat set press, which uh, uses uh, eccentric uh, nuts in the main plate. It allows to adjust the clearance between the wheels and the frame uh, for a perfect fit. Uh, the nuts shaft must be seven millimeters. So yet another great remix for uh, particular uses. Let's like use a different string too. Oh, it's one of those uh, retractable. Um, you know, like those retractable line of badge yeah. lanyards? Looks like that's yeah. what they used here to kind of lift it back up. Winds it back up. Yeah, winds it back up. It's very cool. And then the last one to round it off with just five minutes of the show, we got uh, one from Jay Pat Kinson. Posted up a, their make of the MacroPad print and play stand. MacroPad not added yet, but great. Uh, they say uh, it's a great design. Really appreciate the share. They printed on their Krilty Ender S. Uh, Ender 3 S1. It's a nice little stand for the macro pad. And that is this week's Community Makes. Thank you, everybody, for posting up your makes. I really appreciate it. We had a lot this week. Um, it, was quiet. it was quiet for the past two weeks. It's nice that we get a whole bunch. 
in one week that it, folks are getting back from their spring break. Speaking of which, we'll be out next week. Just as a programming note, we're taking our spring week off. Not really off. It just means we're not doing a guide or video. I know. <laughs> we'll still be anything. Cleaning up project stuff. <laughs> Got to clean up around. <laughs> Uh, Looking at this new Trinky Lamar is working on. Oh, no. Uh, interesting. Oh, the Pixel Trinky, yeah. That's pretty cool. I thought it's it was a... Secret. It's not out. Don't ask. <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk yeah. about it later tonight. Which Yeah, we'll probably have some projects in DSL. I thought it was a prop maker. <laughs> oh, really? I saw those no. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. All right. Is anyone in the chats want to say anything before we close out the show? No, I think folks are are all. Looks like everybody's the on their spring break right now. Yeah, yeah. Do it up. The weather is getting really nice up here in the, our hemisphere. Ooh, it's gonna be ninety today. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Yeah, it's fifty-five here in the in the Massachusetts and uh, you're down in South Florida. It's sixties in the morning. Mm, it's sixties in the so afternoon. <laughs> I guess the last of that, last week of that here. Yeah. Shout out to Sh Shannon. Great show. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for watching. Oh. We have more shows tonight. Tonight is Ask an Engineer and Show and Tell. Um, who's hosting? I believe it might be back to Lamar and PT. You're hosting. Or is it Melissa hosting? I'm not sure. It will be a surprise who's hosting uh, Show and Tell. It starts at um, 7.30 Eastern Time. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Come on uh, the Adafruit Discord server to get a link to invite to get a link to the invite StreamYard. I'm running out of words. Uh, and then at 8 p.m. Eastern Time is Ask an Engineer with Mr. And Mrs. Lady Ada. Full hour of open source hardware news, uh, new products, INMPI, and more. Another coupon code as well tonight. Uh, JP's product workshop is on Thursdays. That's tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Fridays is a deep dive with uh, uh, sometimes Scott, and sometimes Tim, foamy guy. So we get deep dives on Fridays. Sundays is a uh, desk of Lady Ada. She does a live stream on the evenings on Sundays. Monday is Circuit Python uh, weekly meetings, community meetings. Tuesdays is JP's product pick of the week, and then wrapping back up to Wednesday. Every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, except for next week because we're taking off. And next week. Yeah, we're taking that <laughs> All right, don't forget, if you want to pick up anything from the Adafruit shop, you can support your maker habit, you support the company, us, everyone doing a great job. Get your 10% uh, off code with DVI output, and you'll get another one tonight, too, another coupon code. All right. What do you think, Pedro? We good? I think that's it, man. With all that said. With all that said. Number two, make make a great great day. day. See you next week. Pew pew. Week after. Week after. See you tonight, though.